And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Anjali Comet. Welcome, everyone. Democratic Senator Edward Kennedy of Massachusetts has died after a bout with brain cancer. He was 77 years old. Kennedy served in the Senate for 46 years, earning the nickname the Liberal Lion for his steadfast advocacy of progressive causes. In recent years, Kennedy endorsed President Obama's bid for the White House in what was seen as a key turning point in the presidential campaign. Soon after that endorsement, he was diagnosed with brain cancer. Afterwards, Kennedy largely remained out of the public eye, but made a triumphant return at the Democratic National Convention in Denver last August. He addressed the convention to a standing ovation. We will break the old gridlock and guarantee that every American, North, South, East, West, young, old, will have decent quality health care as a fundamental right and not a privilege. challenges with Barack Obama. Yes, we can, and finally, yes, we will. Barack Obama will close the book on the old politics of race, gender, and group against group and straight against gay. And Barack Obama will be a commander in chief who understands that young Americans in uniform must never be committed to a mistake, but always to a mission worthy of their bravery. told that Barack Obama believes too much in an America of high principle and bold endeavor. But when John Kennedy thought of going to the moon, he didn't say, it's too far to get there. We shouldn't even try. Our people answered his call and rose to the challenge. And today, an American flag still marks the surface of the moon. Yes, we are all Americans. This is what we do. We reach the moon. We scale the heights. I know it. I've seen it. I've lived it. Can do it again. Senator Kennedy was also a leading voice in the Senate opposing the invasion of Iraq. He voted against the 2002 resolution allowing the president to use force against Iraq, calling it the best vote he cast in the Senate. In a speech in April 2004 at the Brookings Institution, Kennedy likened Iraq to the war in Vietnam. Sadly, this administration has failed to live up to basic standards of open and candid debate. On issue after issue, they tell the American people one thing and do another. They repeatedly invent facts to support their preconceived agenda, facts which administration officials knew or should have known were not true. This pattern has prevailed since President Bush's earliest days in office, and as a result, this president has now created the largest credibility gap since Richard Nixon. He has broken the basic bond of trust with the American people. In recent months, it has become increasingly clear that the Bush administration misled the American people about the threat to the nation posed by the Iraqi regime. A year after the war began, Americans are questioning why the administration went to war in Iraq, when Iraq was not an uh, imminent threat, when it had no weapons, no pre 
pers uh, persuasive links to al Qaeda and no connection to the terrorist attacks on September 11th and no stockpiles of chemical or biological weapons. Tragically, in making the decision to go to war, the Bush administration allowed its own stubborn ideology to trump the cold, hard evidence that Iraq posed no immediate threat. They misled Congress and the American people because the administration knew that it could not obtain the consent of Congress for the war if all the facts were known. By going to war in Iraq on false pretenses and neglecting the real war on terrorism, President Bush gave al-Qaeda two years, two whole years, to regroup and recover in the border regions of Afghanistan. As the terrorist bombings in Madrid and other reports now indicate, al-Qaeda has used that time to plant terrorist cells in countries throughout the world and establish ties with terrorist groups in many different lands. By going to war in Iraq, we have strained our ties with long-standing allies around the world, allies whose help we clearly and urgently need on intelligence, on law enforcement, and militarily. We have made America more hated in the world and made the war on terrorism harder to win. The result is a massive and very dangerous crisis in our foreign policy. We have lost the respect of other nations in the world. Where do we go to get back our respect? How do we reestablish the working relationships we need with other countries to win the war on terrorism and advance the ideals we share? And how can we possibly expect President Bush to do that? He's the problem not the solution. Iraq is George Bush's Vietnam, and this country needs a new president. Senator Ted Kennedy was also an ardent supporter of civil rights. During the confirmation hearings of Chief Justice John Roberts in September 2005, Kennedy talked about Hurricane Katrina in his opening statement and how the disaster showed that poverty and racial injustice still permeate American society. Uh, the Stark and tragic uh, images of human suffering in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina have reminded us yet again that civil rights and equal rights are still the great unfinished business of America. The suffering has been disproportionately borne by the weak, the poor, the elderly, and the infirm, and largely by African Americans who were forced by poverty, illness, and unequal opportunity to stay behind and bear the brunt of the storm's winds and floods. I believe that kind of disparate impact is morally wrong in this, the richest country in the world. One question we must consider today is how we can take action to unify our nation, heal racial division, end poverty, and give real life meaning to the constitutional mandate that there be equal protection under law. I believe that the Constitution is not hostile to the, the idea that national problems can be solved at the national level through the cooperative efforts of the three co-equal branches of government, the Congress, the executive, and the courts. But not every president, not every legislator, and not every judge agrees that the federal government has the power to address and to try to remedy the twin national problems of poverty and access to equal opportunity. I'm not talking about a handout, but a hand up to give all of our citizens a fair shot at the American dream. Ted Kennedy speaking in 2005. One of the Kennedy's most memorable speeches from the 1960s was when he delivered the eulogy for his brother Robert F. Kennedy, who was assassinated June 4, 1968. Ted Kennedy, the youngest of nine children and the last surviving brother, spoke at Robert Kennedy's funeral at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. My brother need not be idealized or enlarged in death beyond what he was in life be remembered simply as a good and decent man who saw wrong and tried to right it, saw suffering and tried to heal it, saw war and tried to stop it. As he said many times in many parts of this nation, to those he touched and who sought to touch him, some men see things as they are and say why. I dream things that never were and say, why not? Senator Ted Kennedy eulogizing his brother, Robert Kennedy. 
1968. Senator Kennedy died early this morning in Hyannisport at his home.